Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey guys, I'm still working on my official review and comparison of the Switch Lite, but in the meantime, I had you guys send me all your specific questions and things you wanna know, so let's see what ones we can answer right away. What happens if you dock it? So here's the problem. Uh, aside from whether or not it can actually even push a video signal out, if you wanna use it with your regular Nintendo Switch dock, it just simply is not going to fit. The smaller size means the sticks are closer together, which means if you try putting in the dock, you're just gonna hit the sticks. Thankfully, way back when the Switch first came out, we opened up a dock and got the insides. So let's use this and find out. Okay, so to start, let's take a regular Switch and plug it in the dock just to make sure the dock is still working for sure. There we go, so this works fine. So now let's plug in the light. It is acting no different as if we had just plugged it directly into a power cable. It does not react to the dock at all. It just simply charges it, it will not connect to a TV. Something else I wanna test real quick though is that while it's plugged into the dock, will it still act for data pass through? For instance, using a wired controller. So we'll take this one right here. Oh, yep, there we go. So it does still communicate data for controllers, which makes sense because Nintendo has announced a sort of little mini portable stand thing with USB outs. So if you have any kind of charge stands that have USB outs, you can still use a wired controller with the Switch if you like. How does the D-pad compare to other, maybe more easily accessible solutions, like the Hori D-pad controller or anything of the like? So I've been using the D-pad on the Switch Lite quite a bit, and honestly, I really like it. Uh, compared to the Hori D-pad specifically, it's a little crisper. It doesn't have that kind of clickiness that the buttons on the regular Joy-Cons have, but it is a little crisper compared to how smushy the Hori one can be, which I do like. Uh, on the other hand though, it is a little smaller, which is a bit of a trade-off, but I mean, it's the Switch Lite. Everything about it is a little smaller. Uh, something, actually, another controller that I think it lines up really well with is 8BitDo's SN30. I really like the D-pad on this controller, and it's very close, actually, to feeling the same way as the one on the Switch Lite, except for, of course, the fact that it is a little smaller. How does the screen compare to the original model? Does it still have that yellow hue to it like the new models, or is it cool like the earlier ones? Also, is the screen glass or plastic? It still feels like, it feels like the same material as the regular Switch. So this is my new Nintendo Switch. This is the Switch Lite. At least looking at these two specific systems, the Switch Lite does look a little cooler. Not quite as cool as my original Switch, which was very blue shifted, uh, but this is not quite as warm as the new one. Uh, again, something that does happen with production lines like this though is that there is some degree of variance, so your mileage may vary. Your particular Switch Lite could be a little warmer or a little cooler. Bluetooth headphones definitely, do they work with it? Or dongle still needed? So just like with the regular Switch, the Switch Lite does not have built-in Bluetooth audio support. So you can't use whatever Bluetooth headphones you'd like to use. However, the USB-C port still supports being able to use different adapters to hook up to Bluetooth headphones. So a good example actually is SteelSeries just announced a wireless headset that has a dongle that plugs into the USB-C port. I plugged that in and used it, worked perfectly fine. Before moving on, I wanna take a second to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Now, you guys are used to seeing me here on YouTube, but we actually also have a website where you can see all the other stuff I've been working on, and that was made super easy thanks to Squarespace. With them, we were able to get the very straightforward but very appropriately named website, kevinkenson.com, and thanks to their pre-designed templates, we were able to make it look awesome. The templates made it not only easy to do, but are also designed to look great on both mobile and desktop, so I don't have to worry about what platform you guys are visiting it on. Whether you're looking to advertise your own brand or even selling product, they've got all the tools to help you make it a reality. Make sure to check out squarespace.com to start a seven day free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Kevin Kenson to get 10% off your first website or domain. Is it possible to have one Nintendo account on two different switches? So I actually just did an entire video focusing on this entire concept. The main takeaway is that yes, you can. An important thing you have to make sure you do though is that for the two switches, you want the Switch Lite to be your primary account because whichever Switch is considered your primary one is the one that can launch games digitally and any games you have DLC for without having to do any kind of Wi-Fi check. The secondary one, the, the other Switch you don't use as often, needs to be connected to the internet to use properly. Is the sound quality any better? The depth of those speakers implies to me there's more room for it to shine. So I haven't done any like super scientific in-depth tests, but using both systems back to back and switching between them a lot, the best I can tell is that the sound quality is actually very similar. Uh, the only real big thing I've noticed different is that the new Switch 
seems to be a little bit louder compared to the Switch Lite. And I think the main reason for that is because they relocated the speakers from being on the front to being on the bottom down here. So it seems a little quieter and honestly though, it's very nitpicky-ish. Like, and unless I'm actually having them side by side to really compare, it's not anything super noticeable. The experience feels very much the same. Does it feel weird to go back and forth with your regular Nintendo Switch since the light is smaller? Uh, I mean, I definitely notice a difference. I wouldn't say that necessarily feels weird, just different. Uh, it's actually not that uncomfortable so far. Uh, for the amount of time I've put into it, I haven't noticed any kind of major hand cramping or anything. It's pretty comparable to using the regular Switch, although it is definitely smaller. Some of this, of course, is gonna vary a little bit from person to person, because if you have particularly larger hands, this is definitely gonna be a more noticeable shift for you. Uh, I will say the one thing that I do really notice so far is that using both analog sticks is a little less comfortable because this is smushed in more. Uh, reaching down with my right thumb to the right stick just feels a little more uncomfortable. It's not awful, just a little worse. Your most recent videos were about the new Joy-Con Pros from Hori and how the original Switch can be uncomfortable at times. I agree. How is the comfort factor on the new light? Honestly, I would say that overall the comfort factor is basically the same as the regular Switch. Yes, you would think that because it's a little smaller that it would end up being harder for your hands, and that might be the case for someone with even larger hands, but for me personally, they break about even. And this is primarily because the regular Switch as it is is just not comfortable. And so the Switch Lite, despite the size difference, just ends up being still the same degree of discomfort and it's helped a lot by using grips for sure. Can you swap the SD card from the OG Switch to Lite and play the game saved on it? It would save time rather than downloading each again. So while it is a different system, effectively the Switch Lite is still just a Switch. It reads the same and the way a lot of different things interact with it work the same way. So if you were to take the SD card out of a regular Switch and put it into a Switch Lite, you would just get the same error warning you would get if you moved it to a regular Switch, which would be, hey, this has already been formatted for a different Switch. You can't use this. If you want to use it, reformat it and start from scratch all over again. So you cannot move things back and forth that way. You have to individually install each game. How do motion controls feel on the light as opposed to the Pro Controller or Joy-Cons? Uh, it feels the exact same as using a regular Switch. I mean, obviously it's smaller and there's differences in the grip itself, but as far as the motion controls and reactivity, seems to be about the same to me. Compare the D-pad to the one on the Switch Pro Controller. So we already talked about how the D-pad compared to some popular third-party options like the Hori Joy-Con or the SN30 Pro, but in the case of Nintendo's own D-pad, on the Pro Controller, they actually feel pretty similar. I feel as if the Pro Controller option has a little more resistance, uh, just takes a little more force to press down all the way. And of course, again, because it is a slightly larger D-pad, I find it to be a bit more comfortable thanks to that. Uh, but I actually really like the amount of give that the light has. Again, I wish it was slightly larger, but the push feels right. What does the vibration feel like as compared to HD rumble, if any? Uh, so I've seen a few different people ask this about whether or not it has like regular rumble or anything like that. It has none at all. It's not even that it's lacking HD rumble, it has no rumble at all. There are no motors inside the Switch Lite, which is part of the reason why I think it's also a considerably lighter system. So any games that have feedback where you know you get hit and you feel a rumble in system, that's not gonna happen on the Switch Lite at all. It is a completely rumbleless system. What is it like to hold? Would it be more comfortable with a case that has grips? Uh, it would definitely be more comfortable with a case that has grips. That being said though, that's true of the regular Switch as well. You know, I really feel like with this one, it is smaller and you do feel a slight difference in the grip, but the regular Switch as it is, is already kind of uncomfortable to use for a long period of time. And the Switch Lite honestly feels about on par with that to me. So it's really not that bad, but it's still bad enough that if they start making grips made for Switch Lite specifically, uh, that's something I would want because this works, but a proper grip is definitely gonna be better for a long-term play session. Is this able to pair with a Pro Joy-Con and try to output it to a TV? Popular question. Now, if by Pro Joy-Con you mean the Split Pad Pro that we did a review of, no, that will not work with the Switch Lite because that only works by directly connecting to a system. It has no wireless support. If you're talking about a Switch Pro controller, yes, it does. Despite the fact that the Switch Lite does not have the ability to put regular Joy-Cons on its side, it still, for all intents and purposes, is a regular Switch when it comes to wireless connection to other controllers. So you can attach more Joy-Cons to it wirelessly or even connect a Pro Controller, which I just accidentally hit a button on. 
I wanna know what the new Satisfied Grip feels like on it. Well, the new one that just came out wouldn't actually work with this because that's designed for a regular size switch and so it's a little larger and it relies on having those little rubber stoppers to just hold it lightly in place. Uh, because the switch light is smaller, it would just slide in and not really work well at all. With that being said, I do know that Satisfy has actually already worked on a grip for the light and they even sent us one in advance to try out. So I've been using it with this switch and it is really comfortable. Honestly, it feels a lot like using the regular Satisfy grip just scaled down a little bit for a smaller system. How does the blue switch light compare to the neon light blue Joy-Con? Uh, actually, I have both those right here. So they are not the same at all. Uh, this is turquoise, this is blue. So as a result, this is a little more of an actual blue, still very bright, but a very deep traditional blue, whereas the turquoise shifts a little more green. So similar, if you just like light blue in general, you're probably gonna be happy, but they are not a perfect match at all if that's what you're hoping for.